Today, CATL has introduced their own battery swapping technology, but before we talk about this event and also what it means for NIO, quickly again about technology stocks that are again selling off because of the inflation fear, the interest of the 10 years are rising, and uh, well, the NASDAQ isn't looking good, S&P 500 isn't looking good either, but here is an interesting video by Crane Chairs, which are running this KWeb ETF, so China internet names, tech names, and their perspective on Chinese stocks and growth stocks in general. Hello everyone, welcome to China Market Connect. Only two weeks into the new year, we have already witnessed some noticeable market volatility. This week we explain to investors why we recommend to stay invested in China growth stocks for three reasons. Number one, China growth stocks, particularly the offshore internet sector, is attractively priced and offer better performance catch-up. Today, the internet sector is priced at 18 times of earnings after a provoked earning downgrade, mainly driven by regulation issues that compare to US growth at 39 times of earnings that's massively discounted relatively. In 2022, regulation clarity will help to compress left-tail valuation risks and facilitate the potential return to a strong organic growth for the sector. Historically, the growth premium in equity will expand and made an easier policy and a slowing but normalizing economy. We believe both conditions are met in China this year. In order to avoid potential systemic risks and better manage macro stress, Chinese policymakers will have to step up in 2022. We expect policy rates to stay low, fiscal policy to turn more expansionary and more targeted liquidities injections to SMEs. We studied historical pattern between GDP growth and equity style performance and find during an accelerating GDP growth period, value stocks tend to outperform. If GDP growth start to decelerate, but in finding a settled range, the dispersion is less noticeable. However, if GDP growth normalized in a relatively lower but stabilized range, growth stocks tend to outperform. Given our macro expectation is China to stabilize its GDP growth at around 5% from 2022, together with a supportive liquidity conditions domestically, that is a combination bode well for growth premium expansions. This gave us the comfort to prefer growth-oriented equities in China for 2022. Okay, now back to the presentation of CATL. And I think, first of all, giving them props for doing this whole presentation in only about like 10 minutes. So I thought that was really well. And let's look into what they have presented. EV battery technology has developed significantly in terms of energy density, capacity, and driving range. The growing market acceptance of new energy vehicles has given rise to the rapid growth of the industry, bringing the EV battery industry to the threshold of the terawatt-hour era. As we can see, technology advances and economies of scale have brought down costs, which has offset the increased resource costs of a larger power capacity. As a result, we are able to buy new energy vehicles with larger power capacities and longer driving ranges at the same or lower prices. And the prices of mineral resources continue to surge on soaring demand. As a result, the cost reduction brought about by the economies of scale and technology progress was nothing but a drop in the bucket, and the cost curve of EVs is sloping upward. We can't help but wonder, are large capacity and customizations the only paths to the future of battery technology? Most car owners tend to purchase EVs of higher power capacity in order to alleviate range anxiety for occasional long-distance journeys, although only 10 to 20 percent of the total capacity was needed for daily use. They have paid a high sunk cost for a power capacity that is rarely needed. Is there a better solution that addresses the challenges of range anxiety, inconvenience of recharging, and high purchasing and driving costs all at once? So I really like this part where they speak about the sunk cost and uh, economics about that so that really um, people are buying two big batteries in a sense. And so that is why they came up with this kind of chocolate bar design basically splitting up the battery in um, different modules that can be swapped in and swapped out from a uh, yeah, thought of yeah, making things more economic in terms of only using as much of battery um, capacity as needed for the range required. 
And so this is kind of a new concept that um, CATL is bringing here on top of the concept of battery swapping, which is of course based in the area of um, the shared economy and economics associated with that. Um, let me tell you my first thoughts, which are that this concept is looking pretty damn close to the neo swapping uh, in terms of the, the station that I have presented. And um, also, like if you look at some of the closer pics of um, the, the technology for swapping in and swapping out a battery, um, that's looking pretty close to, to the neo battery swap station 1.0. Um, so the first um, iteration of the neo swap stations. Then they say that this will be um, usable for around 80% of all of the EVs um, in the industry so far. But well, here's the caveat. I think it will take a couple of years for more adoption. So this is possibly, as I'm reading it now, just from this presentation, geared more towards uh, mass market producers, possibly in the first step, mostly Chinese producers, some of those low cost um, vehicles um, that are, as I mentioned also in the last video, not competing too much on the technology aspects in terms of the range, um, but rather wanna offer um, like really affordable EVs and um, thereby also might be interested in tapping into this larger network provided by CATL in the future. So they don't need to run their own battery asset management services and don't have to build out this infrastructure, which basically CATL seems to be doing. And here the question mark is like, how big and fast will they be scaling it? Will CATL become kind of the new fuel provider or fuel station provider in the EV area? And how does it relate to NEO? Well, just as pointed out yesterday, um, it seems quite unlikely that this will actually uh, be compatible with NEO vehicles. Um, there might be a small chance that this battery pack is actually even usable um, with NEO vehicles, but I doubt it actually, because otherwise they would have possibly announced that it's already compatible. And uh, But I mentioned also yesterday that I don't think that NEO will be opening up their swapping solution to others because it's more likely to stay exclusive as a premium to luxury provider. And also it would be strange, right, if other cars are queuing up at NEO battery swap stations. And so I also think that NEO is planning out their battery swapping in a way that it can accommodate their fleet users uh, using algorithms and insights into where those stations need to be deployed in order to um, have the best experience for neo um, car owners. And so they most likely won't be relying on CATR. However, seeing that these swap stations are kind of close in terms of technology and also neo coming out congratulating CATR and saying like they kind of support this movement, um, makes me think that there might be something to, to it that actually NEO might be earning some royalty or licenses on the swap stations technology, possibly also to the vehicle integration technology for those who are adopting it later on. And so there might be revenues spilling over. We also don't know yet. That was my second question from my video yesterday, whether or not this will be um, run by CITL as a company only or even the battery asset management company that NEO is already invested in. Um, there were no details on that. Um, lots of details in general missing by this presentation so far. Um, but anyways, um, I think there's one big more reason why NEO will be um, profiting from that. Because now if we assume that this is uh, becoming a success in China and CITL is uh, scaling that one out massively, um, of course, uh, people who will be buying those vehicles that are able to battery swap at some point in time may actually also think about buying a NEO, uh, which might be an upgrade at some point in time. So thinking that one, uh, let's say five to 10 years or even a decade out from here, of course, if you once swapped the batteries, then why would you ever buy a car again that is not able to do that, right? And so the logical step would also be to upgrade to a NEO instead to another EV which is able to do battery swapping if that's becoming your normal user experience and your normal habit. And so that way I think um, CATL is expanding massively this market. It's a big confirmation of the, the prospects of battery swapping. Um, CITL choose their own reasons for it, uh, namely those economics, this new um, way of scaling it into different um, fleet sizes, different cars and, and different manufacturers possibly. And all in all, this should give the battery swapping a big boost. On the other hand, there's also many question marks that I say that this is still well, just a, uh, a company presentation. Maybe this will be a big flop 
maybe manufacturers will not adopt it, maybe CATL won't invest all of the resources necessary um, into such a, a battery swapping network, right? So there are big question marks around it, but generally um, pretty much in line with uh, what I've anticipated. Um, it will bring benefits to NEO. It's interesting for the development in general. And at some point in time, as I've mentioned before, it may actually even force some of the bigger OEMs, maybe for some of their mass market or taxi fleet vehicles, like in Volkswagen's case, um, much likely to adapt such a solution. We've heard the uh, uh, CEO of Volkswagen, Herbert Dies, talking about we need to also adopt Chinese uh, technology platforms. So, well, all in all, this will take more time, um, but interesting um, yeah, development today. And so these are my first thoughts about it. Let me know down in comments what you think about it. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one.